judgment against the profits of Baal and profits of Baal loan shark usury. I just started distributing this writing a few days ago. Yesterday, I took some of these to the Jefferson County Courthouse to leave there. Under this picture, it says Stephen Munsinger, Prophet of Baal. Under this one, it says Loan Shark. Got a fixed income grandpa who can pay your bail? Question mark. Under this picture, it says Jefferson County Courthouse and Money Laundering Center, Golden, Colorado. And this is written on both sides of this one. We'll go ahead and read it. Did you ever notice how the profits of bail that are made through high return loan sharking practices sounds like profits of bail, but spelled different, Munsinger? Well, I did. I have also taken notice how certain courthouse money launderers have sort of a symbiotic relationship with their loan shark associates in business. It's kind of like they attach themselves to the loan sharks like a remora fish on an underwater shark does. But the loan sharks, unlike the other kind, like to keep their heads above water. You know what I mean? Now you might make more money for your very expensive court without the temple if you could just eliminate those bail sharks and make the high return loans yourself. But that would probably make your bail or jail legal extortion game a little too obvious, wouldn't it? I also care to mention to you that when corrupt judges of partial law swear an oath to support and defend their U.S. Constitution, it, it includes their First Amendment. And your First Amendment prohibits the making of any law respecting an establishment of religion. So what I want to know from you is, how do you keep that oath to defend your Constitution when your partial law U.S. government shows favor to certain corrupt religious leaders through IRS 501c3 so-called nonprofit status in respecting establishment of religion? And why does your religion of deadbeat hypocrite legal extortioners not agree with the New Testament of my Bible in regard to your oath swearing? Read James 5.12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. See what I'm saying? Do I have to be a Masonic cult member like 33 degree U to not understand that anti-oath verse? And do you have a problem with my free exercise of religion as the ministers of your money laundering laws rob others through lies? Listen, I'm just a guy who had his child stolen through your government's child exploitation system when he was six years old. He was kidnapped, told that I abandoned him, which was a horrible lie. He was drugged and used for money leverage. That way, some perverts could rob him of his dad for their whore's wages in sin. You understand how your criminal justice system works, right? And almost eight years later, my son is still in the hands of the child abuser that Judge Donald E. Grinswitz of Orlando, Florida handed him over to based on her lies. You want to talk about pain of alienation that helps to fuel my wrath against you high-paid deadbeat frauds? Now let's get back to this court without the temple thing that I mentioned earlier. According to the book of Revelation, the court, which is without the temple, is given to Gentiles. So let's understand who these Gentiles really are as opposed to real Jews. Ephesians 2, 10 and 11, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. 
Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And I know a lot of you have already heard a lot of these verses, and I use some of these verses in different ways and move them around a little bit, but please bear with me on this. When Paul was saying, ye being in time past Gentiles, he was telling it to saints at Ephesus of the spiritual conversion, not the concision. Romans 2, 28 and 29, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Are you starting to understand why I, who was in time past a Gentile, do not care to extort money out of people through your court of law transgressing heathen? So let's understand some things about your mason-built court, which is not justified by God. Revelation 11, verses 1 and 2. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Moreover, your counterfeit governments, counterfeit church leaders, lead people to believe that old Jerusalem is the holy city. But the place where my Lord was crucified is not only called Jerusalem, but it's also referred to spiritually as Sodom and Egypt. Revelation 11:8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So let's take a look at what God does to King Bebes slash the false Jew Gentiles unholy city. Jeremiah 9, 11 to 14, And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken, that he may declare it? For what the land perisheth, and is burned up like a wilderness, and that none passeth through. And the Lord saith, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart, and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Luke 21, 20 to 22, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Did you happen to notice any military people hanging around that spiritually desolate city? And hey, this is something for you to think about. Imagine having Abraham in court on some petty bullcrap charge and ordering a psychological evaluation on him for hearing God's voice, like it is written that he did. Understand? I mean, if someone like Abraham said he obeyed God's voice in your court without, it would probably be a real threat to the corrupt judges and mental health drug pushers who don't obey his voice, right? As it is written, he that is of God heareth God's words. Do you think that you can get past your adopted legal extortion practices long enough to hear God's words, Munsinger? Because if your ill-gotten gains are more important to you than God, then I'll just refer to you as toast. For whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire, as it is written. Now let's talk about the real cornerstone, and also go over the Mason's counterfeit cornerstone, since you're up to 33 degrees in that beast-worshiping cult. 
1 Peter 2, verses 3 to 7, If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief corner stone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Now do you understand how disobedient masons use what they call a cornerstone in the corner of their Masonic temples? And how Christ has made a rock of offense to those builders who stumble at the word? And by the way, you don't have that living stone built into, you, into your very expensive court of racketeering and extortion. Understand? So who do you think got you law transgressors started on all of this bail or jail garbage that corrupt judges of partial law agree with? Hmm? Well, I'll tell you, since I hear God's voice, he's a guy who hired masons and built a counterfeit temple a long time ago. As I mentioned before, the temple is made up of lively stones, not hewn stones. Acts 7, 47, 48. But Solomon built him an house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. So here's what happened. David was told that God would build him a house. And in his message to David, he let David know, when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. But David, didn't wait to sleep with his fathers before announcing a builder. And he claimed that God told him Solomon would build it. And Christ, who lives in me, has the key of David that David does not have. I also care to inform you that according to scripture, David did the will of Satan. 1 Chronicles 21.1, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. 1 Chronicles 21.7, and God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. Moreover, David had sex with Uriah's wife and made sure Uriah got dead over it. How would that be received in court? And through his fornication was born Solomon, who made a high place for child sacrifice abomination in his Molech worship. Read Leviticus 24 and 5. And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a-whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. 1 Kings 11:7. Then did Solomon build in high place for Chamosh, the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Jeremiah 32:35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Some things just don't get talked about in false church Sunday school. Yes, indeed, Solomon of Judah made a high place for abomination in favor of his preferred prosperity God. And Solomon was a rich guy, just like other kings of the earth who get to hide in their dens 
1 Kings 10, 14. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. Revelation 17, 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. See who Masons worship Munsinger? I suggest that you bail out of that Masonic Brotherhood thing you bought into. They lied to you from the start. Acts 7.43, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And do you know what the star of Remphan is? It's represented on the flag of so-called Israel, which is actually the synagogue of Satan, who called themselves Israel in 1948, along with Truman, the law pervert. You see that do what thou wilt thing in the whole of Satan's law includes identity theft for identity thieves. And speaking of identity thieves, I see that the Israeli Supreme Court of Law Perverts has an Egyptian-style pyram pyramid built right there for spiritual Egypt's sake. And old Jerusalem celebrates gay pride for Sodom's sake. So that Sodom and Egypt name that old Jerusalem has in Revelation 11 makes sense to me. And I don't speak judgments against anyone based on their ancestry, but I am speaking against some people who call themselves Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, like is mentioned in Revelation 2 and 3. Oh my, 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 how, oh how could the world go so wrong like it did? For one thing, David obviously lied about Solomon being the builder who did not use lively stones to build with. First Chronicles 28 verses 2 to 6, then David the king stood upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. See how David also slipped courts in there? Guess what just hit the fan, Munsinger? I'm putting you false authorities out of your very lucrative racketeering and extortion business whilst distributing this very alarming, to lawyer types, information to the general public. First Corinthians. And 6 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Jude 1, verses 14 and 15. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to ex execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And I'm telling you, as the judge of you, to either quit your fraudulent judge job or you're damned without a hope, Munsinger. This is the ordinance of God through a real minister of him. You've been warned. And then I signed it St. Michael and I put www.iwarwiththebeast.blogspot.com 
on the bottom, and I don't write back to people there because I don't think there's a way that I left for people to comment there, but there's a link for my YouTube videos, and I told the lady there at the courthouse that he can, he can contact, if he wants to contact me, he can contact me through YouTube. You know, which I, you know, whatever. So, after I went through the, uh, I didn't count how many people there were there, but there, it looked like there was probably about seven or eight armed guards there. Uh, after I went through that gauntlet, uh, I went up to the uh, fourth floor and, you know, just, just gave him those papers and I and I told I told the lady there this he needs to see these papers and I showed her the picture of his face on that now I know that things like this haven't commonly been done this way in the world but you know the broad path is, to destruction is broad so um, you know, I don't do things, I don't do the norm because the norm is the, what, broad path to destruction. You know, so when people say, well, you're not normal, well, I say, well, thank you. So, anyways, I was led to talk about these things, and this is what I've been doing, a lot of street ministry and just going around talking to business people. A lot of people are very upset with that courthouse because they're saying that they're, you know, stringing them along for money and just extorting money out of them. In fact, uh, when I came down the elevator from uh, the fourth floor of that place, uh, a lady was telling me how she was being ripped off by the court right there so I gave her some papers uh, after we went out of there and I gave some to some people that were standing out front and you know I'm just gonna keep plugging away at this I see what's coming you know I mean if they're scared if they're so scared if they got to have seven or eight armed guards to protect these people you know what, what are they going to do after this kind of information comes out? This, this, uh, you know, people are, uh, they call this place the Taj Mahal, the locals here, because of the amount of money that went into that. And these taxpayers, you know, they've, they've paid for this place that they don't agree with. And they're just watching, you know, their relatives and themselves sometimes and other people just getting robbed. So what I was led to talk about. Thank you.